So this is the hidden truth about the war. And this is where his trail ends as well. The impact of the seven nuclear detonations on the world's psyche was great. Those who witnessed the carnage went on to organize a global arms reduction. Perhaps they were admonishing themselves. Furthermore, the existence of V2 was concealed. The events that occurred after the war faded from people's memories. 
and these men were also sealed away from history. Maybe this was one path to achieve peace. And here the curtain falls on this story. However, that does not mean their own stories came to an end. A nation is comprised of the individuals who live in its borders. It can only become a nation when it is supported by those individuals. But mercenaries who cross lines in allegiance for money have no country to protect. They only fight for their own power and fame. But if that was the case, then why did I lose to him? Maybe not having the burden of a nation allows you to fly faster. I bailed out and landed here. The captain was gone. I've lived a comfortable life since then. And I probably have him to thank for that. They ring the bells here at dusk to honor the liberation of the capital. It signals peace, but to me, they are the sounds of death. When a fighter plane goes down, that's the end. It disintegrates into pieces. Incinerated beyond recognition. It's a scary thought. But it also makes you feel alive. I left the military, but I still fly that sky. But, uh... It's pretty lonely up there all by myself. I'd love to fly with him again someday. Marcela Vasquez, the Espada team's number two, and former member of the Sapin Air Force, 9th Air and Land Division, 11th Tactical Fighter Squadron. She is thought to be a survivor of the coup d'etat squadron. She currently earns a living as a dancer. If the demon lord hadn't appeared, our lives might have been different. For me, it wasn't about flying or ideals. Most of all, it was about him, my flight lead. Our mission was to escort the heavy command cruiser that was to act as transportation for the organization. And the demon lord appeared, as if to block our path. I will never forget his overwhelming power. One by one, my comrades were shot down, and then the mother bird we were supposed to protect. I returned alive from that battlefield, and I returned to this city where I grew up. I left the organization, too. I never went back to the sky again. There's no meaning there now that he's gone. He died in that fight. But I don't blame anyone. The regret and suffering that remained after that battle were also what he had given me. They're among the precious few things he left behind. Anthony Palmer, former lieutenant of the Ocean Air Defense Force, 8th Air Division, 32nd Tactical Fighter Squadron. He's been missing for some time, along with Captain Bristow of the same unit, since the decisive Battle of Valdrike. Captain Bristow is rumored to be one of the founding members of a world with no boundaries. Palmer's ties to the captain have led many to believe that he is a high-ranked individual within the group. He currently works for an insurance company based in Aurid, the capital city of Osea. <laughs> Demon Lord was right. Everything he touched fell apart. I thought I was watching magic. When I was in the military, they called me an ace too. I got medals for my actions on numerous battlefields. I never felt fear toward an opponent. The same went for my ideals. I wasn't afraid to take on even an entire country. But when I was fighting him, something felt different. At first, I didn't know what it was. It wasn't until I noticed my hands shaking on the flight stick that I realized it was fear. It's embarrassing, but 
Once I felt that, I couldn't fly anymore. I felt guilt toward my companions at the time. There's always a war somewhere, and I'm sure he's on some battlefield somewhere fighting even now. He'll always have a place to live. Larry Fink, also known as Solo Wing Pixie. GOM Team's number two, and member of the Ustio Air Force, 6th Air Division, 66th Air Force Unit. That's right. This man was his buddy, and his enemy. I should have died that day, but I didn't. I dragged my wounded body and reached ground zero of the nuclear detonations. A barren, empty land. I felt an unbearable sadness when I witnessed that landscape. There were still people living there. They were the ones that saved me. It may be true that the world has no need of borders, but would getting rid of them really change anything? The world won't change for the better unless we trust people. Trust is vital in a peaceful world, but that will never happen. I'm still on the battlefield. Right now I'm near a border. I want to see for myself what borders really mean, and what their volition really is. I may not find what I'm looking for, but I still want to try. Anyway, that's what I've come to believe, and I think that's enough. Will he see this video? If you do meet him, give him a message for me. Yo, buddy. Still alive? And thanks, friend. See you again. The Demon Lord of the Round Table. A warrior who soared through the Belkin War, inspiring both fear and admiration. His presence filled the skies for but a few short months before he disappeared. Apart from that, Nothing is known about him. I was never able to find out what kind of a person he really was. But whenever they talked about him, they always had a slight smile on their faces. That, perhaps, may be my answer.